Good evening, everyone. So now we are in week 12, and this will be the last uh, live interactive session for this course, Fundamentals of Protein Chemistry. And uh, today we will talk about few of the important things regarding to the exams, syllabus and all. So let first, uh, let me share my screen. I hope uh, my screen is visible to all of you. And my slides, my slides are visible. Am I, I and I am audible enough. So week 12 talks about the special topics in protein chemistry. Uh, you might have gone through the lectures that have been uploaded into the NPTEL portal. So it talks about the special topics in protein chemistry, which is mostly related to uh, the viral proteins. I hope you all have gone through the lectures. Then it also talks about the different protein degradation methods and many more important topics that uh, are very special in protein, understanding the protein chemistry and the biochemistry of the protein pattern like that. So the concept that we covered in the week 12, in first, uh, we talked about, ma'am talked about the oxidative stress and uh, about the antioxidant and how these antioxidants can help us to uh, to remove the oxidative stress and to help the proteins to sustain their functional characteristic in the oxidative stress environment. Then what are the disease caused by this oxidative stress uh, imposed on the protein structure or on the DNA? Then uh, we talked uh, about the proteases and enzymatic cleavages, uh, how the enzymatic cleavage can help us to recognize the protein, like N-terminal and C-terminal of the protein, and also uh, how the enzymatic cleavage can help us to determine the sequence of the protein. Then the various techniques that have been used in the adamant degradation processes, which are the reagents that have been used in adamant, adamant degradation, then intrinsically disordered regions, I, or in short IDRs and also about the intrinsically disordered proteins which are IDPs, their roles function, structure function relationship, then uh, the main uh, reason behind the misfolding and how the this disadvantage can turn into the advantage for being used as the potential uh, potential peptides which can be which can be taken as a uh, like like uh, then simulating the protein like uh, simulating the docking and how and because of their like uh, automated like because of their uh, very relaxing structure which can be folded into any type of structure these are very helpful for uh, like uh, in various kind of processes related to the disease and uh, other uh, like enzyme substrate binding or uh, the inhibiting the particular protein. Uh, please hold. Uh, give me a time. Uh, 
please hold for a second. I am sending an email to uh, Sagata ma'am. Then she will also join. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, let me start again. Uh, I, actually, I was sending the email to Sagata, the course instructor. So she will also join in uh, like few times. So let me start with this. Uh, the, so we were talking about the important. Uh, I hope I'm audible. Please confirm. Yes, Am I sir. Audible? Yes, okay. sir. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, right. Thank you. Thank you for confirmation. So we talked, these were the important concepts that were covered in the week 12. And then the important keywords are listed out here. Now, next coming before going to the uh, like uh, going to the problem discussion session. First, I would like to make the few announcement for this lecture. I will be I will be also talking the important topics that you need to cover for final exam. Then uh, I then the question arises that like, are these live sessions coming to an end after this after this session? So my answer is no. I will also be available on my email ID. So if you need any help or if you want to have the discussion on some important topics not related to this protein fundamental fundamental of protein chemistry. So I will also take the live session on my YouTube channel using the same uh, this link. I will also if uh, I get very like uh, very much uh, interest from you all people and then you can like drop your uh, comments in the, the YouTube link uh, YouTube video. You can paste your queries in the comment and also you can recommend which topics you need to be taken. So I will take those topics then. Uh, where, uh, I will also uh, talk about uh, where to contact me for career guidance if you need any guidance or academic help uh, in your future uh, is future studies. I will be available. Then how to prepare for the gate, net and TIFR uh, other entrance exam that will also be taken in the like uh, in end of this session and then how to find the relevant materials for the competitive exam that I will talk about in this uh, session. So let's start this uh, question and answer session. So the first question is related to the viral uh, proteins 
or virus structure, viral structure because this reverse transcripts reverse transcriptases are uh, are found in the viral structures so the question is reverse transcriptase can be used for which kind of phenomena first your options are to convert the viral dna to viral rna sir option b option b to convert viral rna to viral dna uh, yes, let me see if ma'am has joined yes karan i have just joined okay ma'am so uh, uh, do you want to like uh, interact with students uh, so yeah. i will stop for some time yeah yes sure i thank you ma'am extremely sorry actually i've been traveling and so i just got to my place in kolkata friday evening so i have not been able to can you hear me yes ma'am yes ma'am we can hear okay. you so I, i know karan has been taking very good care of the whole course we have been working together for the assignments and for the question papers and for all the assistance i must in this forum actually extend my heartiest gratitude to him for taking so much pains to go through the whole course i knew know it has been a bit out of uh, let's say his curriculum so to speak as to his background and so on but i hope that he has also been learning during the course how about the other uh, feedback from the students karan uh like sornuva andrea and uh, uh, these two students were joining regularly the all the sessions and then uh, i guess they can unmute themselves and then like uh, then give the feedback sure please i'd love yeah, to yeah sornuva please unmute yourself and you can interact with ma'am yes am i audible yes you yes are. yes uh, ma'am it's a great time uh, spending the uh, seeing your videos and the guidance that you have provided and really the course has helped me to grow interest in protein chemistry especially i grew interest in the patterns of folding of the proteins how it's mm -hmm. getting uh, different sort of structures and how it is uh, the structures are influencing the mechanics as well as the chemical dynamics of uh, the life supporting system so Absolutely. in all it, it was great thank you so much actually proteins have been fascinating me for over 30 years now so the fact that i've been able to translate this or actually give something to the students has been most rewarding in this case another thing i found out karan is when i i went to deliver a lecture at a college last week or before i think two weeks ago and uh, i had uh, around four or five students come up and tell me that they were enrolled in the course and uh, they actually so i told them about the sessions they said ma'am we usually are busy during that time but since we have the link so even though you do not have everybody present here they join the link and they do go through the whole uh, youtube video that's what these students actually told me and uh, andrea if you can here from you too yes ma'am hello ma'am uh, so uh, this course has been very helpful for me too ma'am so uh, i am currently pursuing my phd in enzyme uh, enzyme related mm -hmm. studies only so enzyme kinetics related videos and all really help me in my project ma'am oh, and uh, yes and the way you explain it also like you have so much passion towards the subject you whenever you say it's a beautiful concept now it really increases our uh, uh, interest towards the subject also <laughs> thank you so much and the thing is since my email is available karan's email is available you are always welcome to contact us always mm -hmm. like so if you have any specific questions related to your specific enzyme because i do a lot of enzyme kinetics myself so if you have any questions you're always welcome because sure. i just i really enjoy interacting with students and trying to um, help them learn sure thank you that very is, much that is my passion okay thank, thank you. you so much okay thank karan you. i guess you can continue i won't disturb you anymore Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for your kind words and also like uh, 
other uh, for finding the time to uh, like interact with the students absolutely and, no, i uh, just i just got home actually so i'm like yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, but, but i decided that understand. i must join and i the link that you sent somehow it wasn't working because my yes, i have yes. a different internet connection here and so on and so forth so anyway okay uh, and uh, like uh, the uh, it like the andrea and sornva said like i also feel like a great a uh, learning opportunity with your course ma'am and uh, during the like teaching also like when i was taking the live sessions and also i also got so many things that were not clear during my like bachelor studies and mm-hmm. now it got very much like uh, kind of a fluid, uh, like very transparent to me like the way you present the way you teach it is very much helpful for all of us so thank you so much thank you, thank you so, so much, much ma'am. You, and you you know where to find me and you yes, know where to contact me whenever you come if you come over to iit kharagpur even if i go to iit guwahati i'll make it a point sure ma'am yes ma'am oh okay. thank you so much ma'am thank you so oh, much okay you. i'll just switch my camera and thing off okay, okay. you thank go you. ahead thank you ma'am so uh, thank you ma'am and then now we will start, restart the session so now the next question that uh like uh, the swarnma already answered this the reverse transcriptase can be used to convert the viral rna to viral dna can i have the uh, like the explanation for other the wrong answers for this like why what are the this called from viral dna to viral rna which uh which mechanism it will be called can somebody answer the transcription transcription very good and uh, from host rna to viral dna so this i don't know this is also a reverse uh, like this is also a kind of uh, reverse transcription right but it it is not the fair, uh, no, not the way that works in the virus for respective to the reverse transcriptase because reverse transcriptase it will uh, convert the viral rna to viral dna so the uh, b is the right answer and from dna to dna we know it is a replication but here in the case of inter species because this is inter species from viral dna to viral a uh, host dna it cannot be termed as a regular trans uh, regular uh, replication mechanism okay so now coming to the next question the next question is protein coat of the virus that protects the genetic material is referred to as which part of the option c option c capsid yes very good uh this is capsid can i have the uh, name of role of the other other uh, three what is virion the virion is the i think infectious particle so i'm not sure your rna is is the rna cleaving enzyme and polymerase yes. is the polymerizing enzyme of the nucleus yes yeah dna polymerizing enzyme that uh, that are the polymerases rnas are the rna cleaving enzyme and virion is the complete viral particle like it holds the everything the genetic material capsid and the covering layer everything the complete infectious particle is known as the virion okay so correct answer here is the c now coming to the next question the stable complex form, formed by four identical copies of integrase and viral dna is called n which uh, Which, uh, which is the correct option? Instasome, proteasome, transcriptase, or polymerase? Any answer you have? A stable complex formed by four identical copies of integrase and the viral DNA. uh it is known as the instasome okay please remember this is instasome the others are you uh, pro polymerase we also uh, already covered then transcriptase is trans like the enzyme that uh, transcribe the from D- uh, dna to rna and proteasomes these are the pro, uh, like protein complexes okay which uh, now coming to the next question which protein of the influenza virus help it to bind to the target cell gp160 reverse transcriptase hemagglutinin 
और एंजियोटेंसिन कन्वर्टिंग एंजाइम टू सर इज इट ऑप्शन सी ऑप्शन सी हिमाग्लोटिन वेरी गुड द हिमाग्लोटिन इज द करेक्ट आंसर वेयर मैम हैड शोड इन हर लेक्चर दैट इट हैज द काइंड ऑफ द स्ट्रक्चर मिडिल स्ट्रक्चर व्हिच इज अटैच्ड टू द द टू एंटीबॉडीज व्हिच आर प्रोटूटेड फ्रॉम अटैच्ड टू इट्स लाइक द स्ट्रक्चर एंड प्रोटूटिंग टू आउटवर्ड्स uh outward dimension and there the influenza virus the protein from the influenza virus binds here okay in these two regions okay so the correct answer is hemagglutinin now coming to the next question the das portion of hiv binds to the cd4 glycoprotein of the host cell gp120 glycoprotein 140 glycoprotein 41 or glycoprotein 21 any answer you have okay so it is glycoprotein 120 which binds uh, which binds to the cd4 glycoprotein of the host cell okay so can you tell me where the cd4 cells are found what what are the cd4 cells in the host like human Can you recall? It's on the T lymphocytes. Yes, yes, very good. So these are the these are on the T lymphocytes, CD4 glycoprotein. Now coming to the next question, you have to choose the odd one from these proteases. All four are the proteases. Now you need to find out which one is the odd and which which one does not falls into the category of all uh, other three. So uh, options are. Option C, elastase. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Yes, chymotrypsin, trypsin, and pepsin are used for protein digestion. Okay. And what are you? Uh, what is the use for the elastase? Elastase function, I don't know, but it's getting on. Okay. Uh, any other answer I can get, Andrea? Elastase actually also cleaves protein in valine yes. and threonine region. Yes. Yes. Elastase is also a protease. So all four are the proteases but you need to find out uh, what is the major difference between the, all the four like other three and one which is odd yes can i get the answer so can you tell me uh, now the common things is all four are proteases now can you tell me the different different cleaving site of the uh, all four proteins where the chymotrypsin cleaves in the peptide chain what is the cleaving site of chymotrypsin can you tell me after the carboxyl uh, group of uh, aromatic side chains yes that means c terminal right yeah yeah c terminal what is the cleaving site of trypsin uh, carboxyl site of uh, arginine and lysine very good so this is also c terminal now tell me the elastase uh, you already told the... that this is for the valine and threonine right so yeah. where does it cleave c terminal c terminal only very good and uh, oh sorry oh. yeah so this is also c terminal can you recall the cleaving terminal of pepsin Actually, among all three, among all four, pepsin is the only pep protease which cleaves on the end terminal, and it cleave it cleave as a end terminal of uh, lysine, then phenylalanine, okay, then tryptophan, and tyrosine, okay. So, pepsin is the odd one here. okay so pepsin is the odd one here now coming to the next question which group of the amino acid residue are all prone to oxidation due to the oxidative stress first can i have the definition of oxidative stress can you explain me what is oxidative stress and how does it arise sir 
Any so oxi oxidative stress generally arises when uh, the oxidative means oxygen, reactive oxygen species react with the side chains of the amino acids and transform it to something else. Yeah, means it, it does not transform it to something else, but it alters the structure and, yes, that, and, and that, that, uh, that leads to the that leads to the misfolding or the degradation of the sometimes like misfolding or uh, misappropriation of the kind of uh, its functional site. So uh, oxidative stress that arise due to the oxidation of uh, uh, like either terminal of the protein and that causes due to the that causes to due to the ox reactive oxygen species or reactive nitrogen species. OK, so can you identify the amino acid terminal which are more prone like uh, which are highly prone to the oxidation? A. Option A. Yes, yes. very good. Because uh, the cysteine methionine, these two contains the cyst uh, SH group, right? Sulfur, sulfur group and tryptophan tyrosine. These are the aromatic amino acid. So these four amino acids along with the other aromatic amino acid, they can, they are the more prone to oxidation due to the oxidative stress. Why? Because aromatic amino acids contain the uh, like uh, unsaturation. And that, at that unsaturation, the reactive oxygen species can react more uh, like uh, it can react in more easily. Why? Because what does the reactive species tells? This reactive it is reactive oxygen species are very much like a, a react like why they are, these are called the reactive reactive species because they can react to anything because they have the free uh, oxy uh, radical because they have the free electron which can which can leads to the which can lead to the uh, chain reaction of the ele electron cleavage and the rebonding so that they can uh, they can act on this particular like sulfur have the lone pair okay and these two have the unsaturation uh, among the unsaturated uh, unsaturated bonds and saturated bonds unsaturated bonds are the more prone to get uh, attacked by the any functional group right so that is why the cysteine methionine tryptophan and uh, other aromatic amino acids are more prone to oxidation due to the oxidative stress Okay, I hope uh, this concept uh, I was able to like clear you. Now the next question is the uh, there is an unknown protease. There is an unknown protease that cleaves the peptide sequence. This is the peptide sequence given into three polypeptides, which are IQV, AGQ, AGKLT, and GP. The name of the specific protease is which one? Is it elastase, trypsin, chymotrypsin, or pepsin? Elastase. Elastase. Very good. So, can you tell me the uh, uh, like cleavage site of elastase? Valine and theorine. Valine and theorine. Very good. Because it it is uh, giving the fragment from valine to alanine. So, and also from here threonine to glutamate, uh, glutamic acid. So, this must be the elastase. Okay, now coming to the next question, glutathionylation uh, of proteins is which kind of mechanism? Modification of reactive ex reactive protein is cysteine by reduced glutathione, or modification of reactive species serine by reduced glutathione, or reactive species reactive protein methionine by reduced glutathione, or reactive protein lysine by the reduced glutathione. A. So, what is the glutathionation? Cysteine A. Cysteine, very good. Because cysteine has the SH group in that, and that is more prone to the, uh, like converting to the reduced glutathione. So now, the next question is you need to identify which one is not used as a biomarker. Options are NFK, means N formyl kynurionin uh, formation. Then dityrosine formation, nitrotyrosine formation, or glutathione formation. Which one is not used as a uh, biomarker? Glutathione formation. Very good. Uh, other three 
are used as the biomarker for the identification of whether the uh, whether the oxidative stress is present or not okay now coming to the next question which one of which one is incorrect for the fly casting mechanism of idps what are idps idps are intrinsic intrinsically disordered proteins intrinsically disordered proteins so now you need to identify what are not what is what is incorrect about the fly casting mechanism option a specific binding site search for and found while folding option b reaches a high affinity conformation option c non specific binding site search for and found while folding or option d the eg sampling for many conformation what is fly casting mechanism any guess sir please explain this okay in fly casting mechanism what happens like uh, this is this is related to uh, because uh, because the idps have the intrinsically disorders these and these are rich in uh, these are rich in the proline amino acid residue and also related to the uh, like the acidic amino acid residues mostly related to what you uh, what you call them uh, these are the uh, these are the amino acid residue which are polar polar amino acid residue so normally and they lacks the hydrophobic amino acid residues because of them the, because why because proline are richer in that so that they cannot fold the proper second uh, alpha helix okay and because of the rich in the proline site and also the lack of hydrophobic amino acid residue they can fold in many different different structural formation based on the environment present in them okay and the fly casting mechanism relates to all three all three kind of uh, states because of their fluidity nature like they can fold in any kind of structure they have eg sampling and they can have the many conformation if you if you find the idps in the energy landscape normally the properly folded protein will have the lowest energy okay and this will be the high uh, like uh, this will be the proper folding proper folded structure however in the case of intrinsically intrinsically disordered proteins or idps you can have the many different different conformations uh, which are uh, folded and there is no proper native structure for the uh, for the uh, kind of idps so they reaches high affinity conformation they can have the specific binding site such for and these can the folding can happen like uh, this folding can happen while they are binding to a particular protein so all these three are related to the or uh, all these three are related to what you say uh like uh, the um, sorry so all these three the specific binding sites such for the founding protein reaches high affinity conformation and eg sampling of many conformation all these three resembles to the fly casting mechanism however the non specific binding sites such for while finding the uh, while folding is not correct in case of the fly casting mechanism i hope you understood this top uh, this question because they can have the multiple specific binding site and they also can reach to the high affinity conformation while folding itself and they have the many conformation which are related to the fly casting mechanism but this statement is incorrect with respect to the idps understood or there is doubt no sir understood okay so next question is which of the following method cannot be used to characterize idps so now that i have explained the, the idps d. option d x ray crystallography why sir because the idps are not having any ordered or particular structure yes that's why very good very good 
because they have they do not have the ordered structure so they cannot be characterized using the x-ray crystallography because uh, without having the any order structure they cannot crystallize so if it cannot form the crystal then we cannot test it using the x-ray crystallography so the correct answer is d uh, next question you have the formation of amyloid beta protein peptides primarily occurs in which kind of disease option a parkinson option b alzheimer's option c option type 2 diabetes option b alzheimer disease very good so can i have the property of beta amyloid proteins and where they are where these are found these are found sir, amyloid these beta are found proteins. in the nerves or nerves of the brain cells and yes. they forms the beta pleats that coagulate like the am amyloid means starch like structures okay very good and what are these called what are these uh, uh, like a special kind of structure called Sir, I these are called the plaques. Plaques, okay. Ah, uh, plaques. Now coming to the next question. Which among the following is not true about IDPs? Op options are IDPs are proteins which lacks the stable three three dimensional structure. IDPs are disordered only in lo localized region. IDPs carry low density of the charge amino acid residues. And IDP exists as highly flexible conformation. C. Option C. Yes, sir. Are you sure? Because all others are correct. Yeah, all others are correct. And uh, actually, these have the high charge amino acid residue. And because of that, they interact with uh, polar, like uh, because, because of that, they interact with the surrounding water much efficiently because they don't have the proper folding and uh, and do and they also have high densities of charge amino acid actually reverse is true so the correct answer here is c now the next question the triptic digestion of he heptapeptide heptapeptide means how many peptides it will have seven seven and that consists of the three lysine, two methionine, one serine, and one proline. Yielded a tripeptide and tetrapeptide. Which of the sequence is correct? Uh, you take time, take a, a pen and paper, and try to solve this. Then, if you are not able, then I will explain this how to solve this problem. And uh, what is the amino? Uh, what is the Protease used here. This is the trypsin, right? Triptych digest means trypsin is used here. So, and you have the different composition of the protein. Now you need to find out how this triptych digestion can yield to the tripeptide and tetrapeptide. Try to solve it. Can I have an answer? C. Option C. Can you explain? So, um, the third uh, uh, lysine, when we cut uh, the tri trypsin, will uh, cleave at uh, uh, lysine residues after the uh, carboxy term of the lysine residues. So, 
KPK will be a tripeptide and MMSK will be a tetrapeptide. Okay. So why cannot cleave why cannot it cleave at here this is also like a carboxyl terminal between k and p it is followed by proline so it will not uh, cleave there. yes okay so and uh, what about the other like only this composition can give you the uh, because the trypsin cuts at the c terminal of lysine and arginine amino acid residue but it should not followed by proline right but uh, here that is why it will not cut here it will cut only at the uh, carboxyl terminal means if it is cutting here it will be the n terminal if it is cutting on the right hand side that will be the c terminal so it will cut at the at between lysine and methionine so it will release a tripeptide and tetrapeptide very good now coming to the next question the polypeptide GIMWAPL is cleaved by a pepsin and digest and the digested segments are can you identify what is the cleavage site for pepsin? Leucine, phenylalanine, tryptophan and tyrosine. Yes. So can you identify which will be the uh, digestive segment? Which terminal did it cuts? Pepsin? N terminal. N terminal. So can you identify now? A option. Option A. Are you sure? Yes, before tyrosine. So uh, WAP will be one and before uh, uh, leucine. Before leucine. Yeah, but there is an exception. There should not be P proline when the pepsin also cuts. That is the exception. So uh, the leuc after like when proline is present, then after if the cleavage site is present, it will not cut at there. So the correct answer here is B. Do you remember oh, it? Okay, it okay. cuts at the end terminal, but before the cleavage site, proline should not be present. Yeah, okay. okay, so option B is correct here. Now coming to the next question. The zinc ion is superoxide dismutase, which is uh, uh, like, uh, uh, which is kind of a, that. What is the role of superoxide dismutase? Can you tell me? Sir, to degrade the uh, superoxides into H2O or O2. Okay, very good. H2O so, or O2. H2O2. Okay. Normally, H2O2 hydrogen peroxide from hydrogen peroxide to H2O and O2. Right? Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Okay. So, the zinc ion superoxide dismutase is coordinated by how many, uh, like, what is the uh, composition of its, uh, like, uh, the structure that in uh, that uh, coordinate the zinc ion? So, options are 3 aspartic acid, 1 histidine, 4 histidine, and 1 cysteine, 4 histidine, or 3 histidine and one aspartic acid. So the structure is given here. You can also take help from the structure. Three histidine and one. Three histidine and uh, one aspartic acid, very good. So here, this is the zinc ion. And this is coordinated by one histidine, second histidine, third histidine, and backside, there is one aspartic acid. So the correct answer here is three histidine and one aspartic acid. Next question is, which is not the source of oxidative stress? Options are superoxides, hydroxyl ion, nitro, uh, nitric oxide, or temperature. What does not cause oxidative stress? Temperature. Temperature. Very good. Next question. The IDPs bind their ligands less than their globular proteins. Options are with higher specificity, with lower specificity, with the same specificity, or randomly. How does it find? Higher specificity. 
very good that we discussed in the previous questions also uh, next question is cyanogen bromide cnbr this is a chemical degradation method these are used in the chemical degradation method so it cleaves the peptide bond after which amino acid residue cyanogen bromide methionine very good it cleaves after the methionine so that concludes the session for uh, the problem answer session for this now the next that i promised that i will be discussing the important resources for any competitive exam so uh, this will be important uh, that this will be very much uh, helpful for the students who are up, who are right now in the like uh, in their bachelors or masters and they are hoping to like they are aspiring to go for the phd so for that you need to write the csir net get and other uh, exam entrance exams which are conducted by the various organization you can also write the tafr exam uh, so the tafr exam uh, so normally how you will prepare for this kind of exams so these kind of exams first uh, for any competitive exam i would like to tell you you first go through the syllabus uh, you should have the syllabus in your hand if you have the syllabus in your hand then you will be able to identify which all topics you need to focus and don't escape any any topic from the syllabus if you cover entire syllabus that will boost your chance to get selected in that competitive exam then the second step the first step you need to gather the syllabus the second thing you need to have the previous year questions try to find out on online or from the question bank like uh, for the different uh, for the gate exams csr net exam the question banks are available you can try to follow that uh, those kind of uh, papers and then you try to solve by yourself and then match with the uh, the answers that have been given online or in the like uh, the website they may provide the answer script for that you you try to if that is a most of the exams are the objective exam so try to solve the papers by yourself and try to practice as much as possible the questions uh, what should be your strategy you first go to the syllabus then uh, if you have gone through the lectures in your studies and you have followed the uh, if you have followed the reference book then you need not to go again and again to those resources you just try to solve the questions look through the questions and then try to solve the as much as possible then if you get stuck somewhere just don't uh, see the answer and then uh, go forward you just uh, check where you have done the mistake then you try to find out what is the explanation then only focus on that uh, if you are stuck somewhere then you don't know the answer then you go to the refer uh, like reference material for that uh, for that particular topic that can be any book or any uh, like uh, course material or lecture video these days everything is available on the youtube you can go to the youtube and then uh, for protein chemistry uh, i uh, like i assure you the lectures that ma'am has taken on the fundamental protein chemistry that will be more than enough for to so if you have deliberately like if you have given the proper attention in the course and solved the problems then it will be much more enough for any kind of competitive exams if you are uh, if you are in contact with any protein chemistry question or enzyme kinetics question if you have solved the problems enzyme kinetics then biochemistry and few topics in the molecular biology also that will be that have been covered in this course so this will be very much helpful for your entrance exam preparation then you can follow the pathfinder book series uh, they have, they have provided uh, these i followed when i was preparing and the main keyword that i would like to tell you is practice practice and practice the more you practice the more you will we have the chances to like clear the entrance exam now the next thing that uh, i would like to announce that uh, like uh, you all the 
all the materials that the recorded lecture that have already been uploaded in the YouTube channel. You go through the link. Uh, this uh, this uh, slide that I will uh, I as uh, generally I upload in the G drive. This G drive folder you will have all the slides and the help resource materials regarding the core uh, about this course, and also you can get the information in the like description box of the respective YouTube video. Like all the sessions I am recording and then uploading to the YouTube channel. Uh, in that YouTube channel, in the description box, if you open, you will find the link to find the slides and also about the Telegram channel. Then the more about me you can get on the, my website. Then uh, for internships, you can email me on this email ID. I usually take the internship, online internship. For uh, like uh, docking studies, like mostly related to the bio bioinformatics. So you can email that to me. If I have openings, then I will happy to take uh, you as an intern. And then these are the mode of like you can email to me on this email ID. Mem also, uh, Mem has also shared the email ID. In the in her uh, uh, lecture slides, so you can email. Mem has also mentioned during this interactive session that you can always email, not only related to this, uh, uh, like uh, only related to this type of uh, studies, like on the protein chemistry. You can you can also email me related to the your if you have any career guidance problem or anything related to your academic problems, you can email that to me. I will try to help you as much as possible. So and I will be uh, regularly uploading the videos, the short videos related to the academic on my YouTube channel. So uh, uh, subscribe to that channel and uh, to get the recent updates. And also you can as I in the beginning of this session, I told you that you can mention your import like interesting topics that you want to get cleared that you can mention in the uh, that you can comment in the YouTube video like in the comment box and then I will try to take the, those topic in my next uh, live session. Apart from that, if you have any doubt, you can uh, unmute yourself and ask. So in last, I would like to acknowledge IIT Guwahati, my parental institute, then IIT Kharagpur and NPTEL team for giving me this opportunity to take the live sessions on this course, Fundamentals of Protein Chemistry, then PMRF NPTEL program, TA program to give me this opportunity. I would like to also acknowledge Sagata uh, Mem. Like she taught very well and then like uh, she made the course very like crystal clear that we all understood it and then it will help us in our career. Then I would like to acknowledge as a NPTEL support team, IT Madras, PMRF coordinators, and uh, course TA of the and it uh, this course. So thank you and yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you, Karan. I am also you, here. I heard how you conducted it. It was very well done. Thank and you so much, ma'am. You you will be a good teacher. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Okay. So any doubts you have, Sonma or Andrea, uh, you can unmute yourself and then ask the questions. Ma'am is also available here. Ma'am ma will also explain if you have any doubt. Sir, nothing from my side. Andrea? Sir, uh, uh, like the week uh, six alone, uh, uh, the, the solution if possible can uh, give to Okay, sir, sure, sir. Week six, uh, week six, we will try to provide you the solution. Uh, you have you pasted the qu your question query in the discussion forum? Ah yes, sir. Okay, okay. Okay, so, I, I I will have the TS check it. Okay. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Yeah. And if you have so, any questions otherwise, you can ask Karan or myself. Okay. Sure. Yes. yes. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Sir. That will be all. So we uh, we give you uh, we. Wish you all the best for your upcoming exams for intense exam and also the final exam for this course. 
So if you have any doubts related to this course, uh, you can also email us before the end semester exam, like in uh, this final exam anytime. And you can also paste your queries in the discussion forum. OK, uh, thank you, ma'am, for joining. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Thank okay. you. Sir. Uh, Bye. So Bye. All the best to all of you. Bye. Thank you, you ma'am. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.